I think Nanami is the most well-realized character in Jujutsu Kaisen. I mean, just look at him. He's got the drip. Look at the fucking drip, man. He's relatable, and not only do I think he's a great character in his own right, but I also think he makes both the story and our main character, Yuji, like, so much better. To explain why, I first have to start with Yuji, because when I started the story of Jujutsu Kaisen, I wasn't very sold on Yuji's motivation. His grandpa tells him to help people, then falls over and dies, and because of that, Yuji really wants to help people, I guess. But really, Yuji's grandpa is saying way more than just help people. What he says specifically is, <laughs> This is exactly what Nanami struggles with in his life, whether or not he wants to help others or live for himself. The reason he quit being a Jujutsu sorcerer in the first place is that too many of his friends died. He got tired of risking his life and the life of his colleagues for something that isn't rewarding. No one thanks the Jujutsu sorcerers for what they do. It's really dangerous and the only compensation they get is money. And money is available a lot of places, so might as well go work a normal job, right? Because at least then he doesn't have to experience any more death. And this is totally fair, no one said being a Jujutsu sorcerer was easy. But he comes back. He comes back after his visit to the bread store. Welcome to the bread bank. When he notices the curse on the lady's shoulder, he tries to convince himself that it's none of his business. That he can just look the other way and keep earning money. Let's get this bread gamers! But the next time he visits, the need he feels to help her is too strong. He has to exercise the curse because he feels responsible, as he is the only person who can. But this is still something he's struggles with even after he joins Jujutsu High again, because he still doesn't enjoy being a Jujutsu Sorcerer. Even when he's at death's door, there is one thing he deeply wishes, and that is to be by himself on vacation, not worrying about anything, just living for himself. He wishes he could do that, but there is something preventing him from doing so, and that is how he feels that he needs to do the right thing. I love how his change in outfit throughout the series reflects that. From businessman in the beginning of season 1, and gradually becoming less and less uniformal and strict, even losing his glasses in the end, he's one of the very few people in the world that can be a jujutsu sorcerer, so he feels a responsibility to use that power for good. And that's really what I think one of the messages of Jujutsu Kaisen is, to do good with the advantages that you might have over others. That if you are in any kind of well-off position in any way, it is your duty from one human being to another to obediently be of service to said human being. Not to further distance yourself from them and widen the gap between the two of you. I think this is what Yuji's grandpa was talking about in the beginning of the story. There is definitely a split between the Jujutsu sorcerers where one half of them are like Nanami and works to help others, whereas the other half works to make money and live for themselves. Mei Mei is a great example of the latter. That fucking piece of shit. She doesn't take jobs very often and is only in it for the money. As soon as it seems like she is about to lose the ghetto, she flees the scene, leaving all of her comrades behind. She then sells all of her stocks in Shibuya because she knows what's about to happen there, which is partially her fault. Whereas Nanami, even when he had like basically no energy left, he was really messed up. He still kept fighting. And Yuji is a sorcerer like Nanami, who lives and works to help others. This is why when Nanami Nanami dies, he can leave the rest to Yuji, knowing he's one of the good Jujutsu sorcerers, giving him a beautifully animated sequence of him walking on the beach with the most sad, depressing piano in the background. A scene that was like so short in the manga turned into something so beautiful and lengthy. Like Jujutsu Kaisen is genuinely one of the best anime adaptations I have seen. Like they will just take some panels from the manga and just go above and beyond to elevate it and make it so much better. Also, his ability is just awesome. I I love the fact that it's very true to his character in the sense that once he's done working, he wants to be done. But what I love the most is the way it has a condition, and the ability will only activate if that condition is met, and that being that the time has to be past working hours. I don't know why, but abilities with conditions and restrictions like these are just so cool to me. Hunter x Hunter is filled with it, and I guess kind of what made it popular. I guess it's cool because you can't make your ability overpowered. If you make it too strong, there has to be a downside to it. That 
that evens it out. And I guess what's coolest about it is that the ability can be whatever the character wants it to be. I'm not entirely sure if this is how it works in Jujutsu Kaisen 2, as they haven't really explained that aspect of it too much. But I guess it's just the idea that the characters aren't limited to learning pre-existing techniques, but can instead choose themselves. And the author can be as creative as they want with that ability. No big energy balls or laser eyes or whatever the hell. Not that there's anything wrong with those powers. They can be awesome too. But I just love how unique and specific the other approach is. Like this dude's ability is literally to move in 24 frames per second. Like what? In Hunter x Hunter, there's technically nothing you can't do with then, as long as you have the proper restrictions. Okay, that was kind of a tangent, but yeah, his ability is dope. My favorite character in Jujutsu Kaisen really does change back and forth all the time. One minute it's Nanami, then it's Mekamaru, then it's Toto. And I really think that speaks to how good the characters in this series is. I think a lot of times my answer to who my favorite character ends up being Toto, there's just something about him that puts him just a little bit above the others. So make sure to check out this video where I go into detail about why Toto is probably my favorite character.